ओके हाय फ्रेंड्स वेगो फॉर मार्च मंथ योजना टाइटल यूनियन बजट 2022-23 इन दैट वी आर गोइंग टू सी दैट फोर टॉपिक्स वन इज स्ट्रेंथनिंग फेडरलिज्म बैंकिंग एंड डिजिटल करेंसी डेमोग्राफिक डिविडेंड एंड ग्रीन इकोनॉमी सो वी गो फॉर द आर्टिकल स्ट्रेंथनिंग फेडरलिज्म फर्स्ट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज फेडरलिज्म सो दैट विल बी इजी टू गो थ्रू द आर्टिकल सो फेडरलिज्म इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट इन आई इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो फेडरलिज्म इज layman understanding is sharing of powers between governments so india is a vast country so we cannot run with one single government so what the best idea is go for federal concept so in our indian constitution we have union government and state governments they call it as executives union government and state governments that's an example to understand federation so this federation when implemented in a system so they comes under the concept of three major dimensions one is financial administrative and legislative this is the major uh, dimensions of federalism one is financial administrative and legislative so based on that basic background we go for the article so paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 so paragraph 1 speaks about this uh, concept of planning commission and niti aayog right so, to serve the needs and aspirations of the people in federal polity this federal polity is what we, i said so federal polity it's nothing but union government and state government so reason for this union government and state government is nothing but as india is a geographically very spread country and also we are culturally different and geographical difference is there that's called diversity to address diversity in the aspect of political sense federation is the best solution so so federal polity initially in our indian system so they went for this planning commission so planning commission that is planned development of india actually this was against the spirit of federation so planning commission which went for centralized planning so what is centralized planning means we said that we have union government and state government but in reality in india right from 1950s and they have given the year of 2015 from 1950s to 2015 we have this planning commission so what are the primary role of planning commission is for entire india they determine what should be the development of india so why it is called centralized planning means it comes under the union level and there are few personalities involved in this planning commission who determines the fate of entire india so it's a centralized that's called it that is the reason it's called as centralized planning okay so logically the centralized planning will not work very well for the country like india because already we saw india as a diverse country okay so by, based on this understanding and as planning commission was not performing well in india especially after 1991 that is called lpg era when india went for this open economy so very common man understanding is uh, when private players are allowed to run the economic system so planning commission was seems to be an irrelevant system so irrelevant uh, institution so to address this problem 2015 we have this niti aayog and what is the expansion of niti aayog is national institution for transforming india in the name itself we can understand national institution for transforming india so here it's more focused on uh, involving state in policy making so here state means states states in policy making so states in policy making and so our guidance and policy advice was given by state of art resource centers so this uh, resource centers are run by niti aayog and niti aayog was acting as a facilitating body they are not determining everything in india they are acting as a facilitating body and states are playing a major role in policy making this we can easily understand from centralized planning niti aayog is moving towards decentralized planning so decentralized planning so decentralized planning so that's given in paragraph 1 why it is also called as centralized planning it's also given in this paragraph we can see that uh, allocation of funds is a so planning commission which impose policies on states and tied allocations so that is also another reason tied allocation is money is being allocated based on what is determined by planning commission 
So planning commission will say how much money will be given for the state for what purpose. So what a problem in this idea is there may be a reason where the state government doesn't need that purpose. So ultimately they can't use the money. So tied allocation that's the biggest trouble. So that's going in paragraph 1. When we go for paragraph 2. So paragraph 2. When you say feder federalism. So another most important aspect of federalism is there are two dimensions. One is cooperative and competition. So there are two dimensions of federalism. There is cooperative federalism and competition federalism. So to understand what this uh, cooperation and uh, competitive federalism is. Uh, so they have given states need to be assisted with resources and sound policy advice. So that's called cooperative. So assistant through resources and policy advice. Policy advice. Whereas competition is nothing but it's given. Uh, on the other, they need to be encouraged to improve their performance. Improve their, their mean states here, improve their performance. How performance can be improved is one important mechanism is through competitive nature. So, Niti Aayog is doing both the things under Indian Federation, mostly focusing on cooperative and competitive federalism. This is given in paragraph 1 and 2. So, next we go for paragraph 1. Paragraph two. So, paragraph 5, 6 and 7. So, in paragraph 1, so here they are giving the governing council. If you go for the previous page, that is Niti Aayog's governing council. So, Niti Aayog's governing council. So, who are all the members of that thing is chaired by Prime Minister. So, chairman is the Prime Minister, chairman Prime Minister and consisting all consisting of chief ministers lieutenant governors of union territory as equal members so we can see that uh, chief minister and lieutenant governors of union territories all as members so what we need to understand here is as we say india is a federation how this federation is established is by means of institutions one important institution is this niti ayog governing council where we have a prime minister who is representing the union level and also we have a state governments represented by the chief ministers and also union government, uh, sorry union territories lieutenant governors. So ultimately we can see there is an institution to represent the federal character. So that is paragraph 1 whereas paragraph 2, it is focused on uh, Niti Aayog's, so when Niti Aayog came into picture, so by 2017, so they have a document called strategy document. So, strategy document, India at 75. So, this clearly knows the India 75 means in related with our independence by 47, 75 years, what should be the position of India. So, that document, that strategy document, India at 75 was prepared by Niti Aayog. Okay. And this preparation itself clearly shows that how India, uh, how this Niti Aayog is more focused on cooperative character, how they want to interact with all the stakeholders. They have given in this so in preparations this all we need, we need to compare with the previous institution of previous institution of planning commission which is not consultative in nature so they'll decide what is good for the system which most of the time is not correct okay so preparation where we can see 800 stakeholders who are stakeholders means the persons who is going to get the impact of the decision very layman understanding they are called as stakeholders so this 800 stakeholders are from central level state level and district levels. So, district levels and also apart from this, it, it also includes external experts that is 550 external experts. So, there are people who are expert in certain domain who may not be an Indian person. So, Niti Aayog always want to rope in them for our development. So, what is Niti Aayog's primary objective is? Development should not be done only based on Indian knowledge, even we can go and get outside knowledge, foreign knowledge for our development, that is called external experts. This external experts can be from within India who are not part of the government, that is called external experts and also outsiders. Okay. So, here we can see that uh, the primary focus of all this thing is, 
so they give they say new india so the strategy document 75 want to establish a new india that is they want to make indian economy 5 trillion dollars so we are around 2 uh, 2 trillion dollars close to 2 trillion dollars and we want to achieve 5 trillion dollars we want to double the indian economy so doubling indian economy is very uh, when the economic value for example from 2 trillion to 5 trillion it need a massive rethink what need to be done what are the reforms need to be done so uh, that was the primary objective of this uh, indian do uh, so uh, strategy doc strategy document india at 75 okay that's done in paragraph 2 and paragraph 3 Here we have the sustainable development goals. This is a global level goal, which is not only for India. So overall, in the global level, if you want to put it very uh, layman terms, we have the planet Earth, and it should be sustainably developed. What is sustainable development means? The cost of development should be very minimal, so that future generation doesn't need to pay the price. So that is called sustainable development. For that global level, we have the sustainable development goals. There are 17 goals with 169 targets. So, to give an example, what are the 17 goals means, for example, to eliminate poverty, hunger, improve health, improve education, all, all related to this, 17 goals and 169 targets are given. And they say that all these goals are interdependent. So, interdependent and interconnected. So, interdependent and interconnected. So ultimately what happens is when we say sustainable development goal, though it's being created at the international level, it applies for every country. When it comes to India, though union government accept the goals, but implementation we take those subjects which comes under state governments also. For example, if you take education, it's a concurrent list, both union government, state government need to work. Agriculture is the major driver to eliminate poverty. Agriculture comes under state list. So ultimately there should be a better interaction between union level and state level. So that is what the point says. So especially when sustainable development goal came into picture, especially the role of Niti Aayog in that thing is, so Niti Aayog want to dissolve silo based functioning in government institutions. What is Silo based functioning means if you want to uh, put in other terms, what they call is watertight compartment. So, there are various departments and ministries in India at union level and state level where their interactions are very minimal. But the point is, these departments, ha as said, interconnected and interdependent, as the sustainable development goals is interconnected, interdependent. So, there should be a proper interaction between all the departments. So, to give a good example, if you want to improve the health of a society where health is not improved only based on medicine. For example, start with uh, public sanitation, start with drinking water. Uh, all these various departments, ministries are interconnected. But if they are not interacting with each other, that is called watertight compartment or slow based functioning. So, uh, to attain sustainable development goals, Nidhiyak's primary objective is to avoid this uh, slow based functioning. They uh, make sure that interact with all the other various departments and ministries. Okay. So, ultimately, what are the primary uh, advantage of this thing is? So, there will be a better utilization of resources, greater achievement of uh, goals and also we can also see that uh, overlapping can be eliminated. So all these are given as a points here. So, uh, so we can see that what are the benefits of this. So benefits, one is first we can say about uh, resource utilization. So effectively you can use the resource utilization here and also we can see that convergence of schemes. So, you doesn't want to create multiple schemes for the same beneficiaries. You can uh, try to uh, understand the needs and try to convert the scheme. So, so that will be benefit for the uh, people there. And also greater achievement, greater outcome achievement. So, ultimately you are able to achieve the greater goods very effectively. So, that is given in paragraph 4. So, so paragraph 3 and paragraph 4. So, here they speak about competitive federalism. So, what is competitive federalism is encouraging competition among the stakeholders especially st at state level and district level. So, uh, you know the outcome of competition and the co uh, competition is very effective you can get the best of each uh, units here. So, that is the primary aspect that is to facilitate competitive federalism is to facilitate improved performance. 
facilitate improved performance improved performance so uh, healthy competition so capacity building all is being done and also we have this uh, ranking for this uh, encouraging competitive federalism there is a ranking where social indicators with quantitative objective so this point is very important we'll say how it is so especially for states when we say social indicators to measure them is always uh, very troublesome for example improvement of health or education we can't do it in a short span of time for example improvement of education within one year we can't understand the real impact so that is always challengeable but government is coming out with a lot of innovative ideas so that is what that is called quantitative objective so measuring in quantitative terms of the social indicators so right now coming government is coming out with a lot of indicators we see that so that is the uh, points given in paragraph uh, four whereas paragraph five so there is a concept called aspirational district this is also another good example of uh, competitive competitive character of uh, niti ayog so aspirational districts so what is aspirational district is right now in india there are few districts which are considered to be uh, uh, underdeveloped so considered to be underdeveloped so but government never called them as underdeveloped they are called as aspirational districts and to improve the performance of aspirational districts so they encouraging the competition so among these aspirational districts that's also a good example of competitive federalism so next thing is uh, so the primary objective of this ranking is uh, to have a greater efficiency convergence in governance and uh, measuring the progress in rank at district level so ultimately the aspirational districts what they want to do is similar to the previous benefits they want to efficiently use the resources and to get a greater outcome so that is the primary thing and next thing is when you go for this uh, paragraph 7 so paragraph 7 so they have said that uh, if this aspirational districts are performing well so there are some incentives so whenever there is a competition there should be incentives to achieve certain objectives through competition so government want to create some incentives so in that incentives if rank 1 in aspirational district they'll get additional 10 crores rank 2 5 crores and rank 3 three crores okay so ultimately we can see that uh, so ultimately we can see that this encourages the district level administration and authorities to compete better and to get the incentives from financial point of view also so that is given there and also some of the indexes being created we saw that competitive federalism is more about ranking and competing with each other so niti ayog come out with a lot of indexes for example uh, composite composite water management index this is at the nation, national level so management index similarly we have this uh, school education index india innovation index so that's all given in the next pages quality uh, state health index sustainable De uh, sustainable development goals index so all this being created so ultimately we can see that this encourages state to compete so uh, next thing is paragraph 1 2 3 and four so in paragraph 1 so so the latest version so they are also updo, updating this uh, indexes so in that latest latest version of sustainable development goal india index so india index so they have 100 plus indicators so this we can understand from this uh, message what we can understand is niti ayog is constantly updating this uh, indexes to match with the ever changing environment of our development so uh, so uh, it's it's become a uh, important so this index sustainable development india index becomes the most important policy tool so what is this policy tool is based on this index government can learn where the state uh, states are standing where the districts are standing with that informations they can take some policy decisions okay for example there are certain states where based on the index the government really understand that health is improved a lot so they can take some policy decisions based on it so it's becomes the most important policy tool so that is uh, given there and also right now we can see that in paragraph 1 uh, also there's an index for northeastern states so northeastern district sustainable development goal index so this 
transformation of this index is not only with indicators level. So, not go Niti Aayog is trying to enhance the indicators to 1000 plus, but also they are transforming to the lowest level, sub national level. From state level, they are transforming to district level, especially in northeastern states. We know that development in northeast is very slow. So, they are creating this index at the district level, sustainable development index at the district level. So, that can help in making policy decisions. Okay. And also, we can see that uh, they are also coming out with sustainable in paragraph 2, we can see that. So, Nidhi Aig is also coming out with sustainable development urban index, urban index and dashboard. So, why urban indexes? Right now, we can see that India is urbanizing very fast and uh, so, we also want to make sure that uh, there is a proper uh, development in urban areas. So, they come out with the urban index, but also they will go for uh, rural index also in near future. So, in November 2022, okay. So, so, number. so I think there is a factual error here. So, there is a dashboard of, uh, they have given us uh, sustainable development goals, urban index and dashboard 2021 and 2022 in November 2022 probably there may be factual error so so this the uh, these are the things they have given in paragraph 2 here and paragraph 3 so regarding we saw the federation consists of legislative administrative and uh, financial so this informations are in more in financial nature this paragraph 3 so they say about finance commission so finance commission is a constitutional body created in a constitution, the primary objective of finance commission is how to share the resources between union level and state level. So, so they say that finance commissions, so tax, sharing of tax revenues, sharing of tax revenues. So, when you say taxes means there are two types of direct tax and indirect taxes. Tax revenues from the year of 2000 to 2005. So, union government share 29.5 percentage. So, right now it has improved. For example, if you take 2015 to 20, it has improved to 42 percentage. To put in very layman terms, if 100 rupees need to be shared between union level and state level. In the year of, year of 2000, where Union Finance Commission said that state governments will get 29.5 rupees current situation is the state government is getting 42 rupees. What we can understand from this is Right now, Union Government or Finance Commission is ready to give lot of financial resources to the state level to achieve lot of goals. Previously, that was not a situation where Union Government will take the majority of the tax revenues. So, we can see the shift in our political system or shift, shift in our governance structures where state governments are more empowered financially. Okay. So, that is given in this paragraph 3 and also paragraph 3, they have said that from centralized, centralized policy and decision making towards decentralized system, which we already saw in the previous uh, pages, decentralized system. This we can understand and correlate with the point. When they are in centralized nature, they will determine what should be the money given and uh, they took the majority of money. Right now, it is decentralized and state governments are given greater autonomy. So, that is the reason the um, uh, 42 percentage is increased to the level of 42 percentage. Okay, This is because of decentralized nature. That is given in paragraph 3. And paragraph 4, so in paragraph 4, uh, so we can see that uh, the general purpose transfers which is unconditional nature. So, this is again between uh, union and state level. So, general purpose transfer. So, again it is unconditional. So, what is unconditional is, uh, so if, if you see that article they have said no strings attached. What is no strings attached means whenever union want government want to give them money, they will not put any conditions for it. So, uh, what is the condition means? For example, if they want to give money for uh, uh, health expenditures, they say this should be the condition you want to satisfy, then only we can allocate the money. But this general purpose transfers will not have the character, they will allocate the money. State governments have greater autonomy, they have greater freedom to spend that money. So, we can see that. Uh, so, from 2011 to 12, uh, how this has improved a lot from where the financial year of 2011 and 12, that general purpose was 68, 64.8, whereas if it is go for 2019-20, uh, that was around 74.2 percentage. Okay. 
and uh, and also the specific purpose transfers that is with conditions opposite of this is specific purpose specific purpose transfers that is with conditions where union government will give the money based on conditions so based on conditions that all that has uh, reduced from the same time period so for same time period so 2011-12 it's reduced from 35.2 percentage these are some factual informations which you can use it for your answer writing to substantiate so now the question is being asked how are uh, a federation is transformed in India. All this you can relate this and say, so 25.7 percentage. And also states borrowing. So states borrowing is also improved. Okay, states borrowing. So state governments are allowed to borrow from uh, outside markets. So state borrowings. So what that number is? Uh, so. Gross state domestic product. So in that, previously they were allowed to have three percentage as a state borrowing. So if hundred rupees is earned, three rupees they can borrow. Right now that limit is increased to five rupees. There's five point five percentage. So five percentage they can borrow from the outside uh, market. And what a benefit of reaching to this uh, five percentage is, right now all the state governments combined will have an extra of four lakh four point three lakh crore. So think of this money, 4.3 lakh crore, creating infrastructures that will propel the development to the next level. So that's the point we need to understand from this. And also in paragraph uh, five, we can see that uh, GST. GST is the most important uh, uh, mechanism right now, especially for revenue sources. So that is also being mentioned here. That's given here. And also in this budget, this year budgets, that is 2000, uh, we have the financial year starting from 2022 to 23. In this budget, there was a reference of scheme for financial assistance. That's the most important thing, paragraph 5. So, scheme for financial assistance to the states. To the states for capital investment. This is the most important thing. So what union government says in the budget is, in this current year budget, there's a scheme for financial assistance for states for capital investment. Capital investment is creating physical or social infrastructures which will have a great benefit to the society. For example, creating a road network, rail network, or creating a hospital, all comes under capital in capital investments. So there's a scheme created in this budget. So, so paragraph one, so paragraph two, paragraph three, and so paragraph four and five. So in this uh, paragraph one, related to the previous scheme, the scheme what you said for capital investment for states. So that is increased to 15,000 crore for, for 20, 21, 22. So 15,000 crore, the previous budget, they said it will be 15,000 crore. But, but allocation of one lakh crore, so that is being said for this uh, uh, 20, 22, 23. So union government says that they are going to allocate 1 lakh crore. So ultimately we can see 10 times money is being allocated. The previous budget that was only 15,000 crore. Right now they are giving 1 lakh crore for investments, 10 times for investments under the scheme. And also union government is saying that there is a 50 year interest free loans. So 50 year interest free loans, 50 year in sorry so interest free loans to states so interest free loans for uh, states and uh, so above from the borrowing they can also make 50 years interest free loans for, uh, for the states capital investments so we can see that right now in uh, union government is giving greater trust for creating infrastructures and also uh, fiscal deficit okay so, uh, as per 15th Finance Commission, state will allow fiscal deficit of 4.0. And so, fiscal deficit is clearly indication that even borrowing money, deficit is about borrowing money. If you want to put, uh, put in very layman terms, that is expenditure minus revenue, that's called deficit. So, as per this uh, 15th Finance Commission, state's fiscal deficit, state government's fiscal deficit can be 4.0 percentage of uh, gross domestic 
so gross state domestic product so 4.0 percent they have improved a lot so uh, what it clearly indicates is what the finance commission indicates to the state government is if you even if you borrow the money that's not a trouble you go and invest for capital creations so that is the point they are trying to say in that uh, one condition attached that is 0.5 percentage should be more focused on power sector reforms why this condition is attached is right now in india power sector is considered to be the highly inefficient system where our resources are being wasted a lot so government want to improve that so they say they said that whenever you want to get extra money for example for 100 rupees you are getting extra 4 rupees in that 50 paisa need to be spent for power sector reforms so that's a condition attached by the uh, finance commission saying that please do this because it clearly indicates that power sector is the most inefficient system in india okay uh, next thing is uh, so paragraph 3 so right now for urban planning so in this budget also there was a greater focus on urban planning why urban planning we know that uh, in india urbanization is happening very fast what we called as rapid urbanization because of rural to urban migrations lot of people are coming to urban areas and migration is uh, happening so that results in urbanization lot so government is focusing on this urban planning so so right now uh, central uh, so union government want to support state governments state governments in following areas one is modernization so modernization of buildings and next thing is uh, building bylaws and town planning schemes so town planning schemes next thing is uh, transit oriented development so right now union government is saying that we need to focus on urban planning a lot and uh, so in that modernization of building bylaws so uh, so right now in most of the urban cities we can see that whenever you want to construct a home you need to get the approval of the corporations and this corporations have laws which is created 30 years 40 years before where right now it cannot be relevant to modern day era so they want to transform all these things and town planning scheme how the uh, cities need to be planned correct right? so where we need to have the central business districts so all this need to be revamped and transit oriented development so so all this are being focused by the union government union government says we are ready to help the state governments in all these things so for in this budget there was a reference of all these aspects and also they focused on this uh, uh, scheme of amrut so this is regarding uh, urban aspects that is re regeneration and urban transformation that is the pr last three words are more important to understand so uh, so uh, atal modern uh, atal uh, modernization and re uh, regeneration and uh, urban transformation so that is the primary focus on this particular scheme so this schemes were focused on uh, urbanization so again in this budget there was a reference of the scheme and allocation of money is being done for it now apart from this in paragraph 5 uh, so paragraph 5 that is prime minister's development initiative so development initiative for northeast so development initiative for northeast so so there was a, a specific on particular uh, aspect of a region where in this 1500 crores are being allocated by the union government and its budget and especially they are focusing on pm gadi shakti so gadi shakti is more focused on physical infrastructures gamur is very keen on creating road networks rail networks waterways all these are being promoted under this particular uh, ambala scheme gadi shakti where in this prime minister's development initiative for northeast government is union government is allocating 1500 crores okay so especially for infrastructure creations infrastructure creations so this regarding uh, this uh, strengthening federation so all these points where we can relate is whenever there's a question regarding federal concepts and that will be a question based on current events they'll ask how to strengthen the indian federal reserve how it is being done and we can start with niti aayog what being done all this you can relate this points and also the recent budget initiatives to strengthen federalism that's the point we discussed starting with northeast states and uh, sustainable development goals index how uh, niti aayog is playing a role in it and we have this niti aayog governing council 
So, all these are the points we can relate with federal concepts okay. and also we saw finance commission regarding fiscal federalism or financial federalism. Next article is banking and digital currency. So, right now we can see this digital currency is in news a lot. So, government is coming out with this idea of digital currency and all. We will see what is the news article is about. So, so recently RBI. So, we will go for paragraph 1. So, paragraph 2 and paragraph 3. So, in paragraph 1, so RBI, Reserve Bank of India, so they have this digital payment index. So, so RBI is measuring this digital payment, how money is being transformed digitally, there is an index for it and they have given some numbers for that. So, what are the numbers? Uh, for example, if you take 2019, the index value is around 173, whereas in 2021, 2021 it's around 304 literally we can see it gets doubled so what you can understand from this uh, data is a lot of people are focusing on this digital payment so that is happening so that's the uh, index given by RBI and what are the important parameters so just to know this index and parameters this can also be a prelims question so for that first one is payment enablers so payment enablers next thing is payment so demand side factors demand side factors payment infrastructures payment infrastructures and the supply side factors okay supply side factors so these are the terms sometimes this can be a prelim statement in uh, UPSC examinations so payment performance payment performance and consumer centricity. So, these are the five indicators based on which this digital payment index is being measured. So, which common sense we can understand payment enablers means for digital payment right now we use Google Pay or all these things, Pay, Paytm, these are one way of understanding and payment demand side factors, how in uh, shops they are demanding, supply side factors, whether we have the infrastructures, all these things payment performance, how it is being, it is creating confidence, all these are the factors, just common one understanding. So, based on this paragraph, what we can understand is in India, digital payment is picking up. So, these data are being given and how it is being measured is given, that is in paragraph 1. So, whereas in paragraph uh, 2, so paragraph 2, so there is a special uh, incentive scheme in this budget focusing on digital transactions. Okay. So, a special scheme, they are not given the name of the scheme and all. So, there is a special scheme to promote. So, so digital transactions, we will see what are the reason for all these things. So, that is being referred. So, what we can understand from this paragraph is government is very keen to promote this uh, digital payments. Okay. So, whereas paragraph 3. So, this schemes focus on this, especially the scheme what we saw in the previous paragraph, focus on to build banks, banks to strengthen, so digital payment, so digital payment, digital payment ecosystem and also promoting, so rupee debit card and BIM UPA tra digital transactions. So, these are the things what the scheme tried to do in India, even that scheme was given in 2020 and 21 financial year budget. So, they primarily focus on strengthening the bank's digital payment systems and also focusing on rupee debit card. Right now, when we take our ATM cards, we can see that there is term called Visa, Master, uh, MasterCard, these are all foreign payment enablers, so where we need to pay the commissions. So, the Indian government is promoting its own version called rupee debit card and also BIM UPI. So, right now it is more about uh, mobile application based payment systems. So, that is the primary focus of the scheme. So, that is given in this paragraph 3. So, next thing is paragraph 4, 5 and 6. So, in paragraph 4, so right now digital banking unit. So, there are different ways of digital transaction, one is digital banking unit. So, digital banking unit. 
so where it has increased a lot that is the thing what they say in this paragraph and also still we can see that people visiting people visiting branches that is bank branches. So, what we can understand from this uh, paragraph is though digital payments are picking up still people are going to bank physically. So, this clearly shows that in Indian system there are two extremes. There are people using mobile phones to transact financial uh, uh, aspects where are, there are people on the other extreme going to branches physically and doing financial transactions. So, that is given there. So, to avoid all these things right now government is strengthening this uh, digital banking units. So, in this digital banking units next paragraph you can understand this. So, the primary object of digital banking units is to focus on financial inclusion. So, we can financially include everyone based on digital banking uh, unit if it is being properly created and recent example for this thing is Pratan Mandri Jandan Yojana. So, these are some financial terms which and you can use it for your answer writing that is so 48, 44.58 crore bank accounts and you just relate with uh, population in India. So, we have 100 crore plus populations and based on this one Yojana we have created 44 crore bank accounts. So, literally we can see that uh, approximately around 50 percentage of population we are able to reach with the banking system by this scheme, one scheme and also it is also said that uh, around 1.57 lakh crore is being deposited in these accounts. This this is based on government subsidies and MG Narega money all this is a part of it. So, 1.57 lakh crore is submitted through this particular uh, Yojana who created a bank account. This clearly shows the importance of this particular uh, uh, Yojana how it created this uh, financial inclusion. This also includes insurance, insurance cover for this particular scheme and so insurance come which uh, provides the security for people. So, this given in paragraph 5 be, all is possible because of this digital banking unit being promoted by the government. So, it creates opportunity for uh, rural branches for banks to create this uh, Jandan Yojana get integrated and ultimately resulting in all this financial benefits opening 44 crore bank account 1.5 lakh crore amount is being deposited and insurance cover is being created financial inclusion is all possible because of the digital banking unit. The next thing we go for this paragraph 6. So, so union government said in Lok Sabha so that is the data these are some data which you use it for your answers in Lok Sabha. So, right now we have this 1 lakh 56,000 post offices and this can be leveraged or effectively used for financial inclusions ok. So, and the most interesting aspect is around 1,41,000 post offices are in rural areas, rural post offices. So, this data we need to keep in mind. So, whenever you want to write an answer regarding financial inclusion post office play a major role ok. So, it is all because of digital transactions, because of uh, connectivity between post offices and uh, capitals all this are possible through digital transactions ok. So, paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, in paragraph 1 So, right now this uh, core banking system that is called CBS, CBS is nothing but the core banking system. So, this core banking system is being created in uh, 25,000 25, post offices which provides greater opportunity for people to have financial inclusions and, uh, and apart from this we have this 1,29,000 1, post offices having handheld point of sale missions, handheld point sale of missions based on subscriber SIM cards correct. So, ultimately what is the re, uh, point we need to understand is as we know that 1,40,000 uh, post offices are in rural areas and that around 1,29,000 post offices have this uh, handheld machines where people go there and deposit the money they can 
get back the money. All these are possible through this technological platform. It all comes under digital transactions. Core banking uh, system is there for 25,000 uh, branches and remaining things they have all this uh, uh, handheld devices. Okay. And what are the financial inclusion being done? So financial inclusion at post office level is. So there are a lot of schemes uh, there. That is national saving certificates. The next thing is PPF. PPF and Kishan Vikas Patra. Uh, uh, Patra. So all this uh, Sukanyi Samrajdi Yojana. So all the schemes are possible only based on uh, digital connectivity and transactions. And this is being provided by post offices. So this point you can use it. If there is any question for importance of post offices or financial inclusion based questions, you can use all these points. Okay. So that is given in paragraph 2. So in paragraph 3. So recently government we can see that uh, focusing on this cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency people are using in large numbers. That's given in paragraph uh, 3, large numbers. So government came to know that recently in, uh, in Indian system and across the globe people are using a lot of cryptocurrencies. To understand cryptocurrency, there is a term called Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is one type of cryptocurrency which we can see people are using a lot on our global level and government came to know all these things. So that's given in paragraph 3. In paragraph 4, so, so cryptocurrencies, we call it as cryptocurrencies, but government call this as virtual, so digital asset, virtual digital asset. So in virtual digital asset, so recent in budget, that is 20, 22, 23 budget. So government came out with certain things. For example, first and foremost thing, 30 percentage tax for income generated out of it. So if you are investing in a cryptocurrency and if you are taking some uh, uh, benefit out of it through investments, for that there will be 30 percentage tax slab will be given for it. And also tax at sources, TDS being deducted at 1 percentage. So and also TDS, we, uh, that is we have this uh, 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 gift, if they are giving some gift as a uh, virtual uh, digital assets. So that is also being taxed. So ultimately government is taxing this. So that is given there. And another most important point in this paragraph 5 is, this is information which we need to know. This can be a question in your uh, films also. So by taxing, it's not legal. Please understand, by taxing, it's not legal. This was said in the budget itself. Though we are taxing it, it doesn't mean that it's a legal thing. So that we need to understand, this cryptocurrencies. And apart from this, so right now, so government, especially RBI is coming out with the central bank digital currency. So general, central bank digital currency that is given in paragraph 6 and uh, that is to boost digital economy. What the primary objective is boost digital economy. So boost digital economy and also the most important thing is uh, government is going to introduce, that is RBI is going to introduce digital rupee. So this is based on blockchain using technologies. So blockchain technology, you need to know for prelims aspect from science and technology perspective, what is blockchain technology, what are the key terms in it, that you want to know, which in prelims they can ask you the questions. So digital rupees right now government is promoting it. So that comes under central bank digital currency. So that is being done by the government and uh, so so digital notes, this digital currency and uh, the most important thing is it's also acting as a fiat currency. So fiat currency is you can also transact and do transaction with uh, uh, companies or markets. You can do the transaction because government is recognizing as a fiat currency, okay, which is recognized by the government. You can use it as a legal tender. and. Uh, so it's a another form of currency, another form of legal currency, another form of legal currency. Government says it's not a new currency. So we should not get confused whether government is creating a new currency in India. It's not the existing currency rupee is being digitalized. That comes under central bank digital currency. That's all given in paragraph six and seven. And paragraph eight. So there's a reference that's not done only in India. 
So right now uh, there are eight countries. So eight countries uh, uh, accept uh, having this central bank digital currency. Central bank digital currency is being there in eight countries. Eight countries, especially they are located in Caribbean. So Caribbean countries and also in Nigeria. This factual question can be an answer. This factual point can be a question in your prelims. And also 87 countries are 87 countries are right now they're going for the pilot projects so pilot projects so one is india apart from this there are a lot of uh, sorry 87 countries not 87 percentage so 87 countries are going for their pilot projects of the digital currency okay and also there's a proposal that this in india again paragraph 9 that is central bank digital currency can be classified into two one is for wholesale and retail wholesale and retail so uh, this wholesale will be issued first so that's the point these are all some factual points which you need to keep in mind for prelims point of view so all this comes under digital, digital transaction what we saw right now all part of digital transaction any question regarding financial inclusions what are the measures taken by indian system or indian government you can relate to all these aspects okay so right from post offices right from digital currency and also code banking system jandan yojana all you can relate okay the next article is demographic dividend so the term demographic dividend we need to clearly understand that in a society we need to separate the population based on age so anyone between 15 to 60 they all comes under working age population so when we call this as demographic dividend is when this population's age is very less mostly in the uh, uh, aspect of 20 to 30 or 20 to 40 at the maximum so for a layman understanding that we called as demographic dividend well, simple to put it when the population is very youthful when you take the entire majority of population if you take all their age if majority of them are in 20 to 30 that we called as demographic dividend okay so paragraph one so paragraph two three and four so in paragraph one so they say that uh, so population so india's population is is around 1.38 billion so 138 crores if you want to put it in our terms it is 138 crore population is there global population is around uh, 7 billion or 700 crores right now 700 crores or plus we are 1.38 billion so this clearly says that one sixth of our population is india every sixth person in the world is indian okay that all the information we need to understand and what are the median ages if you put all the age of indians right now one, 138 crore population's age and if you put it uh, an average median is different but average if you want to put in layman terms average is 28 years so this clearly shows that indian population is very youthful population okay whereas uh, they compare it with china and us so china's and us population is growing old so we know that china and us is the greatest economy in the world correct so us is the developed economy china is a developing economy india is also a developing economy so when you take this china and us economy the population is aging so that's a that's a concern for these countries okay so youthful population means a lot of benefits are there owners they get employed and uh, based on employment there are revenues to the government and because of employment they created their own market correct once the people get employed they have a lot of uh, demands in their life either it can be a two-wheeler four-wheeler mobiles and all this we can easily understand so as india's population is very youthful so that it clearly creates a market for india correct but china u.s population is aging fast okay so that's the point which you need to understand from paragraph one and in paragraph two what the indication they are giving is though it's a demographic dividend where our age is only 28 years i mean a median ages but the time period to use it very effectively is 20 years so uh, simple to put that so right now we are in 2022 next 20 years is considered to be the golden opportunity for india within this 20 years if indian policies are set in right directions india's projection to in global level especially economic development social development will be very great because we are effectively using this 20 years of demographic dividend for the indian advantage okay that is also another reason we can see prime ministers referring india's hr capital of the world human resource capital of the world so the government is creating clear policies to take this 20 year time period as an advantage to make india as one of the prosperous country okay so they have given the time period of 20 years this we need to clearly understand 
and paragraph 3 and national income of any country increases with the workforce is educated and employable skills okay so so national income so so based on the previous two paragraphs when you take national income it's entirely based on educated workforce and also skills employable skills so this we can see that how government is giving greater focus on these two areas so only new education policies one such thing where they want to promote education in India a lot and also employable skills though they are getting educated that education along with the skills should have need need to be need to have a demand in the market that's called employable skills even we have skill India program all you can integrate here why government is focusing on all these things okay that's going in paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 right now they are saying that right now we have startup ecosystems emerging a lot so startup ecosystem is emerging a lot and especially in the area of health education health education agri business so what they are saying is right now this 20 years there is the employment opportunities in these areas especially start startup ecosystems are emerging a lot uh, recently we can see in india a lot of new companies are coming into limelight either it can be a swiggy zomato or uh, nike all are startups so it create its own uh, employment or employable opportunities creating wealth for indians so this uh, this this is all entirely possible because of this demographic dividend taking all these companies want to take the advantage of this demographic dividend okay so next thing is paragraph 1 so paragraph 2 so in paragraph 1 so right now we can see that uh, based on the points we understand from the previous paragraphs so government is focusing on national skill development mission so the name itself we can understand so if you want to have better national income so that should be educated youth with uh, employable skill so to promote that right now government is creating this national skill development mission and also government has created uh, initiatives like startup india St startup india skill india or digital india so digital india and we have this mudra scheme so mudra for small industries correct so what we call it as msme so all these are being promoted ultimately creating employment opportunities for creating employment opportunities and next thing is uh, paragraph 2 so they are also referring about the scheme of uh, Gadi Shakti which we referred in the previous article so this is entirely focused on creating infrastructures creating infrastructures like road railways railways correct airports ports logistics so under Gati Shakti, government is also propelling on their side to create this physical infrastructure. We, though it seems to be a standalone point, but we need to integrate here with the article so we can easily understand. As India is in demographic dividend, the age group is around 28, is a median age, and uh, next 20 years is a prime time for India development. So government on its side creating all these infrastructures. So ultimately, society can effectively use this infrastructure, resulting in greater productivity. So uh, that results in socio-economic development. That's given in paragraph two. And paragraph three. So, so government also uh, has, uh, created this uh, digital ecosystem for skilling and livelihood. This is another point. So, digital ecosystem for skilling and livelihood. So. So this especially for uh, young population. So young population to learn and sharpen their skills. So sharpen their skills and creating an opportunity. So based on that, they are in, they have created 750 virtual labs. So virtual labs 
and all this related in creative thinking. So, these are some points which we can relate with how government is responding for this demographic dividend. So, and also e labs 75 skilling e labs. So, this is another point which we need to understand. So, when you say demographic dividend, what Indian government is doing for this, these are the points we can relate it. How Indian government is responding for this national uh, skill development mission is there and also they are creating digital ecosystem for skilling and livelihood. So, there is a e portal for all these things. So, ultimately government is focusing on tapping this demographic dividend to make India a prosperous country. Okay. And next we go for the article green economy. So, paragraph 1, 2, so, what is this aspect of green economies? We know that uh, regarding our development process, ultimately the cost is paid for it and where our environment is being compromised a lot in our development process and that comes a term called green economy. How we are focusing on that, how to minimize the cost or if you want to put in another terms, how to minimize the carbon footprint. So, in this budget, how government is focusing on these areas? Okay. So, we have this clean air policy. So, clean air policy is one. So, clean air policy. So, in this budget, government is focusing on this clean air policy. We know that air pollution is one of the biggest trouble for our country, especially for urban centers. Delhi pay heavy price because of air pollution. So, for all these things, we have this uh, government coming out with clean air policy in this budget. So, that is one. And also, we have this uh, national clean air program. So, in paragraph two, based on this policy, we, are, we have this national so, clean air program, national clean air program and where financial assistance, financial assistance is given to pollution control boards, financial assistance given to pollution control boards, that is given in paragraph 2. So, so, in this article, we are going to focus more on this budget, how green economies is promoted. So, one is clean air policy along with that program to reduce air pollutions and financial money and financial allocations are done by pollution control boards, for center, both for central level and state level pollution control boards. Next thing is paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, in paragraph 1, so national mission for green India for it is a centrally sponsored scheme. So, centrally sponsored scheme means though the subjects belongs to the state level where union government will allocate the money. So, there was an increased allocation of 360 crores. So, 360 crores this fact is not important just to say the importance of this particular scheme in this budget this was uh, given and uh, so based on this right now we can see that. Uh, we have project tiger. So, we have project tiger especially for animals aspect project elephant. So, this is another uh, area of uh, green economy where we are trying to protect the animals ultimately protecting the ecosystem correct. So, especially in wildlife, wildlife arena. So, to protecting of wildlife is also part of green economy. So, in that we have this project tiger and elephant where allocation is enhanced in this budget that is the point this given and also we have this for project tiger we have this national tiger conservation authority where financial allocation is also enhanced for it ok. So, that is paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 and uh, in paragraph 2 we can see that uh, there is a factual information which can be a preliminary question Na national tiger conservation authority a statutory body which comes under Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, Environment, Forest and Climate Change. So, that we need to know what. Okay. And whereas, uh, in paragraph 3, so paragraph 3 where we have this national coastal mission, national coastal mission. So, where primarily focus on coastal communities coastal communities. So, to protect their uh, coastal areas and sustainable development of coastal areas. So, that is a national coastal mission which is also part of this uh, uh, green economy ok. That is given in paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 it uh, primarily focus on sunrise economy. So, green economy 
so green economy is called as sunrise economy this is a term which you can use it for your main sunset writing what is sunrise means emerging economy so right now a lot of things coming under green economy it's all new to our uh, system economic system and social system so that is called sunrise economy which is a uh, new aspect for example electric vehicles so this uh, this paragraph also speaks about it when you take this electric vehicles one important aspect is this battery so government is coming out with this uh, uh, so ba battery swapping policy so swapping policy so what is battery swapping is uh, right now one of the biggest challenge in promotion of electric vehicles is uh, rechargeable batteries so in any family or any uh, any uh, corporations when they want to go to electric vehicles the biggest question is the, always the battery systems so what government is coming out with this electric swapping policy so government is saying saying that in our system we are going to promote this battery swapping what is battery swapping is when you have an electric vehicle there will be any, uh, 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 there will be a location where you want to go to give the dried battery of you and get a new battery and put it into your system it can be a two wheeler or four wheeler so you can see that uh, there is no need for charging it out and you want to establish this uh, swapping uh, centers uh, uh, across the society either it can be national highways or uh, any urban centers people come and swap the things so government is promoting it so ultimately that has a huge impact on our system that's the reason it's called the sunrise uh, 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 economy okay so so that is given in paragraph 4 and paragraph 5 right now they also focusing on this uh, blending so already we have this uh, 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 petrol and diesel we are using it so right now they can blend with this ethanol all this uh, things come under this concept of blending so right now it's around 8% h so 8% of petrol is being blended with ethanol so ethanol is nothing but a by product which is taken from uh, Uh, uh agricultural wastes when you have agricultural sugar sugar cane molasses all this there when uh, it's being uh, extracted we have an ethanol so government says 8 percentage is right now the ethanol mix by 2025 this target is around 20 percentage this is also again part of green economy okay so our uh, next thing is uh, regarding this uh, biomass paragraph 6 so biomass especially for this uh, uh, power plants so power plants for energy generations they want to increase from 5 percentage to 7 percentage of biomass pellets so so ultimately what they're saying is co2 saving is around 38 million metric tons annually for power generation if you are if you are using this biomass uh, pellets so this is the uh, carbon being uh, avoided in the uh, environment so this also in avoid stubble burning what is stubble burning is we know that uh, one of the biggest problem for air pollution in delhi is farmers of punjab haryana they uh, fire uh, they uh, burn their crop residues that's called stubble burning crop residues are being burned that's called stubble burning and if you go for biomass based power generation all these things so ultimately this they uh, this biomass pellets in thermal power plants so if 7 percentage of biomass pell pellets is used in thermal power plants and uh, this biomass can be created through crop residues of punjab haryana so this is the point they try to uh, highlight here the next thing is paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 and also right now we have this uh, central pollution control board so in central pollution control board to monitor air and water quality so air and water quality is being monitored by this uh, uh, central pollution control board again related to this green economy concept okay so uh, next thing is uh, and the most important information is regarding this uh, point of uh, 40% of india's power capacity gas yes, power capacity should be from non fossil fuels this is part of this uh, paris deal so when india went for this paris deal regarding this climate change all 
So, what is the target given is 40 percentage of India's power generation should be from non fossil fuels. So, non fossil fuels for example, fossil fuels is like thermal power plants, they use coal to generate power. So, what the target they say is if 100 units are being generated in India, 40 units comes need to come from non fossil fuels. So, that is a target and this is a promise made by India in Paris deal. So, so as per 2021 Central Electricity Authority, so Central Electricity Authority power generation from non fossil fuels. has reached to the level of 40.20 percentage. We have a target of 40 percentage, but as per 2021, we have 40.20 percentage coming from non fossil fuels. This clearly shows that we achieved the target. That target year was uh, 2030, but we are able to reach it very closely here. So, so this was the points. Okay. So, where we can use this uh, uh, green economy and all uh, uh, points is when there is a question regarding sustainable development what need to be done. So, we can relate all these points here and how India is responding for climate change you can use all these points how Indian government is responding for climate change. So, all these are the points ok. Thank you.